Hi everyone, my name is Paul Richmond, and today I'm going to show you how to photograph your artwork using just your phone. I'm really excited to partner with Arts Habitat to create this video series. If you're an artist who has been thinking about trying to put your artwork online, maybe you've even dipped your toes in a little, but gotten overwhelmed by all the possibilities or couldn't figure out the technology, these videos are for you. From the very beginning, the internet has played such an important role in my art career, and I wanna share some of the tricks and techniques that I use with all of you. So first things first, if you are going to share your work online, either on your website, on someone else's website, if you're submitting your work online for some kind of exhibition, you need to have a really good photograph of your work. Because whoever is seeing it on the other side doesn't have the original there in front of them to compare it to. So all they get is that little digital image that you send them. Now I know as artists we spend so much time just making the artwork that the last thing we want to do is to have to put a whole bunch of work into photographing it and marketing it and doing all of that. So I'm here to make it super easy. First you need some artwork. So here's one of my recent paintings. It's called Do Art. Be Kind. I actually made this for the Youth Arts Collective here in Monterey during their live art event this year. So when you're photographing work, bright soft lighting is good, harsh direct lighting, bad. <laughs> Take some time to find the perfect spot to hang your work for the photograph. I find that indirect lighting from a nearby window is best. I don't like having the window directly behind me, the photographer, because then I cast a big shadow right on the work. So I like to photograph my paintings right here in my studio with my window off to one side, and then I have some nice lighting overhead that's not too direct or pointed right at the canvas. If it's an overcast day, you could also do it outside. That works great too. Now the number one rule of photographing two-dimensional artwork is to make sure that the piece is parallel to the camera. So I like to hang my work right onto the wall. That way I know it's going to be flat and then I can line up my phone to be right in front of it, parallel to the piece. If your work is in a frame behind glass, I would take it out because that glare is gonna cause a real problem. If it's a work on paper, try mounting it to something that you would be able to hang onto the wall. That works really well. If your work is three-dimensional, you wanna have the least amount of distractions possible in the background. You could go with a solid white or solid black, whatever complements the piece best. Now I like to use a tripod when I'm photographing my artwork because it just helps to keep it steady and I can line it up perfectly first. This is a really cheap tripod that I got on Amazon made specifically for phones. So I highly recommend that, but you can always do it just by holding your phone too. You just wanna hold it really steady. Once you have your artwork hanging up, set up your phone, you wanna match the orientation of the piece. So if the piece is vertical like mine, turn your phone vertical as well. If it's horizontal, then flip it on its side. Move your phone really close to the artwork because that's going to make the quality of the image a lot better. I usually leave just a tiny little gap around the edge and that gives me some wiggle room for cropping. Make sure your flash is turned off. You don't need any of that. That will just make your image look a little crazy. The most important rule for photographing artwork, and by the way, this also applies to taking selfies too, is to take lots of options because you want to make sure that you choose the very best one. Before you take everything down, review your photos. Make sure that you got one that you really like. Even zoom in to make sure that the quality holds up. Once you have that perfect photo, the next step is to edit it. You have a lot of options here too. If you have skills in Photoshop or other programs like that, you go for it. But today I wanna to show you a really simple app that anybody can use to edit photos and it works really well for preparing images of artwork. The app is called Snapseed. You can download it from the app store, put it right on your phone and then load your photo into the app. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go down to Tools and click on 
perspective. Now, even when you have your camera lined up really well, chances are there's still a little bit of distortion in the image. You can see how I'm just grabbing a hold of each one of these sections and you can move it in or out to make sure that all of the edges are square. And then once you have it where you like it, click on that check mark and that says we're good. Okay, now next, click on Tools again and click on Crop. Go down to the bottom and choose Free. That's going to allow you to make the image whatever proportion you want. And then you can just drag each corner until you have it cropped so that all of that extra white space around the edge disappears. And again, when you have it perfect, click on that check mark and you're good to go. Now I'm going to show you just a few tools that you can use to actually edit the quality of the image. So again, under tools, then go to tune image. Just by sliding my thumb up on the image, it brings up this menu of options. Things like brightness, contrast, saturation, ambiance, highlights, shadows, etc. The one thing that I want to suggest to you is not to go too crazy. When you overly edit an image, it really does start to look very digital. Baby steps. Just move it over a little bit and then try another one. Move it over a little bit until you get it looking good. One last thing I like to do is go down to tools and click on details. And this is a tool that lets you sharpen the image just a little bit. So it helps, I think, bring out the brush strokes or the details a little bit more. Okay, so when you're all finished and you're happy with the way it looks, click on export and then save. And then it's going to ask you if it's okay for Snapseed to modify the photo. So it's going to take the original photo file that you have on your phone and it's going to update it to these edits. And then you're all finished. The photo that is saved on your phone is now the edited version and you can send it wherever you want to start getting the word out about your awesome artwork. See, that wasn't hard at all, was it? Anybody can do that. So if you've been thinking, gosh, I really wanted to put my artwork online, well, now's your chance, go do it. Arts Habitat and I, we're here to support you and encourage you in any way that we can. I think it is so important for artists to take advantage of all the tools that are out there to help spread the word about what we're doing so that more people can find it, appreciate it, and be inspired by it, and also collect it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Paul Richmond. There are more videos in this series coming soon. Until then, happy art making, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you learned something new and had fun while you were at it. If you did, well, guess what? We have a whole bunch more waiting for you over at artmakesus.com in our Watch and Learn video series. Be sure to check out what's happening in AMU Live, all of our upcoming classes and workshops that you can participate in online. We also have one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunities. Remember, everyone is an artist.